Very little is ever said about Vincent's sexual instincts, which were powerful and coarse. His friend Gauguin, who was soon to join him here in Arles, with disastrous consequences, is always being accused of beastly sexual behaviour. But Vincent has somehow avoided this condemnation. We think of him as an eccentric elder brother, turbulent perhaps, but essentially safe and kindly. Of course he was kind, but there was a dangerous and sexually explosive side to him, and unless we accept this, we can't begin to understand what may have happened to him here in Arles when Vincent's elastic snapped. All the time he was here, he was a manic brothel-goer. When the good people of Arles finally chucked him out, the petitioning women accused him of molesting them. We don't want to believe it. It doesn't fit our cosy fantasies about Vincent. In our imaginations, he's been neutered. He's the artist as the friendly family pet. There's a painting he did here that's so significant. It's of a girl. She's 13 or 14. He called it the Musme. He'd been reading this atrocious book about Japan, Madame Chrysanthème by Pierre Lotti. A typically sexist outpouring of Western drivel about Japanese women. In this book, the Musmes were 13 year old girls who'd be temporarily married to visiting Westerners. Vincent thrilled at this idea. His painting seeks to evoke these illicit desires. See what the Musme's holding in her hand. It's a sprig of oleander, a local blossom that's poisonous to touch and whose aroma can be fatal. There were stories going round among the Zouaves of soldiers in Algeria who'd built themselves temporary huts with roofs of oleander. They'd all died in the night. Vincent's Musme, that sweet-looking little girl, is a dangerous temptation. Why am I going on about this? Because Vincent had some sort of sexual crisis here in Arles. He wrote to Teo that he could no longer get it up, as he put it so bluntly. He was as impotent as a character in a Guy de Montpezan story. Of course he was impotent. He was drinking too much. But the effects of this impotence have been underrated. Yet it explains so much. The explosive atmosphere of his night scenes the taunting and constant presence of happy couples in his pictures. The crisis Vincent had here had powerful sexual fuel thrown onto it. The night had always fascinated him and he'd harboured an ambition to paint it for a long time. The night, he wrote, is more coloured than the day. He painted a magical view from just here, his first starry night. Painting at night, of course, is impossible, so Vincent apparently stuck some candles to the rim of his straw hat and they threw out just enough flicker for him to paint the stars. If I had to choose one of the letters Vincent wrote from Arles as the most revealing, it would be the one he sent to Teo in July about stars. He said looking up at the night sky from here and seeing the stars was like opening up a strange map and seeing all those black dots representing faraway towns and places. And just as you had to take a train to reach one of these faraway places, so to reach the stars, you had to die. It seems to me, he writes, that cholera and cancer are the celestial means of locomotion, just as steamboats, omnibuses and railways are the terrestrial means. To die quietly of old age would be to go there on foot. This is the same letter in which he admits to being impotent. Yeah. 